Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how the Magic Eraser tool works. This is one of Photoshop Elements tools that allows you to remove the original background from a photo and turn it transparent so you can place your photo onto a new background or bring it into a different photo. It does this by changing the color you click on to transparent. You'll find the Magic Eraser tool in the toolbox, hiding under the Regular Eraser tool. To see it, just click and hold on the Regular Eraser tool, and the other two erasers will pop up. Then just move your cursor over on top of it and let go. Let's look up in the Options bar and see what choices we have for this tool. First, we have a Tolerance setting. The tolerance can be set anywhere from 0 to 255. The lower the number, the less areas that will be changed. I'm going to leave it at the default setting of 32. Next we have an anti-alias box. That gives us smoother edges, so I'm going to leave it checked. The next box is called contiguous. That means a color will only go to transparent if it's connected to the color you check on. Let me quickly show you how it works. I'll leave contiguous checked and click on a white area of my photo right here. You can see it changed only the white on the left side of the model. I'll undo that and now I'll uncheck contiguous and click again in the same general area on my photo. And this time you can see it changed all the white areas in the entire photo to transparent. The only problem is that there were parts of the model that were also white and now they're transparent. So I'm going to undo that and click contiguous again. Next we have a box to sample all layers. I'm going to leave that unchecked and opacity I'll leave at 100%. Because it's hard to see the transparent areas, I like to add a solid color layer so we can evaluate our changes better. The Magic Eraser has the same unique feature as the Background Eraser tool in that it changes a background layer into a regular unlocked layer just by clicking once with it on your photo. So watch the background layer when I click on my photo. See how the word background changes to layer and the padlock disappears, that means I can move it around like any regular layer. I'm going to add my new layer by clicking on the Create a New Layer icon, which is the square with the dog-eared corner. Now I'll go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Layer, and the dialog box appears. There's the Use field right here, which is a pop-up menu where you can make different choices and I'm going to choose color which opens up the color picker and from here I'm just gonna choose a red color maybe a little yeah maybe something like that say OK and say OK again right now all I can see is that red because the layer I filled it with is above the layer of the model and completely covering it up. I'm going to click and drag that red layer below the model layer and now we can see the red come through the transparent areas. Now I'm going to make sure the top layer of the model is active by clicking on it in the layers panel and then I'm going to put my cursor over the photo and click on the white area on the right side of the model. Let's zoom in so we can get a closer look. To do that, go under the View menu and choose Zoom In. I'll move my Layers panel out of the way here. You can see we still have some white areas in between the hair and there's a little white around some of the edges. To fix the edges, I'm going to go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Color and defringe layer. A dialog box appears where you can enter a number which will tell elements 
how many edge pixels to replace with colors of nearby pixels. I'm going to type in 3 and click OK. That did a nice job of cleaning up the halo. Now I just want to click on some of those other white areas to clean them up. If you press the caps lock key, your cursor will change into a crosshair and make it easier to see what you're clicking on. I'm going to put on my cap locks and now I have the crosshairs and I'm going to zoom in once more. And then I'll just click on some of these white areas to fill them in. And we're actually getting rid of some of those real fine hairs, which is okay. I'll click down here a little bit. That looks pretty good, but one final trick I like to use is to make the smudge tool active by clicking on it. It might be hiding under the blur tool, so if you see the blur tool, you can click and hold until the other tools under there pop up. And the smudge tool looks like a finger with uh, smudging through some paint. So click on that to make it active. And that works really well for blending and smoothing the fine hair edges. And I'm going to press caps lock again to take that off. And now I can see how big my cursor is. And I'm just going to drag over some of these areas to blend them in and smooth them out a little better. And then I'll go over on this side and do the same thing. Now I'm going to zoom back to 100% view and I'm going to get rid of the red layer by dragging it to the trash can. You can just click and drag on that layer and like I said drag it to the trash can and it will get rid of it. Now I'm ready to bring her into another photo. To do that just click and drag the layer over on top of the new photo. So I have a photo in my photo bin that I'll bring up. Click on your original photo and then just go over into the layers panel and click and drag that layer right over on top of your new photo and when you let go it appears as a new layer in in that photo. Now go over to the toolbox and um, select the move tool and then you can move your new layer around position it the way you want it you might want to give the new background a slight blur. You can do that by going up to the filter menu and choosing blur and Gaussian blur. Ah, but see, our model layer got blurry. We don't want that, so I'm going to cancel. The reason that happened was I still had that layer active in the layers panel, so you need to be sure to click on the right layer that you want to blur to make that the active layer. Then you can go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can just drag that slider to make it more or less blurry. I just want to give it a slight blur. Click OK. We could play around some more with the color and lighting to make it blend in better. But since this video is just about how to use the Magic Eraser tool, I'm not going to get into all that. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.